Good evening, brothers and sisters. I am Minister John Dickens with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank all of you, amen, for joining me for this Thursday night for Bible study, amen. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Yes, praise the Lord. The Bible says that everything that had breath, praise ye the Lord, for his praise shall continually, continually be in all of our vows, amen. It is always a blessing, brothers and sisters. It is always a blessing to be in and a part of the house of the Lord, and to be counted amongst the living and not amongst the dead. Amen. We are talking about the spiritual living brothers and sisters and the spiritually dead because there are people who are walking around, eating and drinking in the flesh, but the reality is their spirits are dead. Amen. But there is good news. There is good news because Jesus has come to set all of the captives free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. So uh, all, amen, that are dead in Christ can rise today. They can be alive if they believe and have relationships with him. Bless his holy name today. But we have to understand there's always something for us, brothers and sisters, to be thankful for. So let us come, amen, tonight. Give God all the praise and glory that he and only he deserves. And when we learn to do that, he will come and make his home with us so that we can experience both his fullness and his wholeness. Bless his holy name today. I have to first begin by giving honor to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for saving me from my sins and commissioning me to preach his word, which is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to his people all around the world. Please remember, um, as you join in, please remember to share. Amen. Please remember to share and like, amen, this post, this video. Um, and in doing so, you are participating, believe it or not, in evangelism. Evangelism is not simply preaching to others and just sharing your faith. Uh, verbally, it's also doing so through our communication, because believe it or not, brothers and sisters, we are in a warfare. We're in a spiritual warfare and we are in an informational warfare. Um, all of us, ourselves, our children, uh, they are all being uh, inundated with all sorts of information on social media. Uh, they're constantly being barraged with images. And what we need to do is combat this information, brothers and sisters, with the word of God. The word of God is sharper than any double-edged sword cutting through flesh and bone. So we need to make sure we spread the word of God by any means necessary. Amen. Now let us remember, brothers and sisters, to pray for each other. Let us pray for all those who are in mourning and bereavement. Many have lost their loved ones, their very close family members, through no fault of their own. Brand new couples that have just been wedded, amen, um, getting into car accidents on the wedding night, amen. Uh, newborn children, brothers and sisters, being diagnosed with terminal illnesses. So there's always something for us to be thankful for. There's always something for us to be praying for. And let us keep our minds, amen, stay on him. Let us keep the perspective that we have in life. There's lots of things happening in our country, lots of things happening in our communities. Uh, but let us always remember that there are many people growing up, um, not just simply in different parts of the world, more than likely right on your own street, right in your own block, that have life way, way worse uh, than you can imagine. So let us thank the Lord, amen, for what he has done for us, uh, not just in our lives, but most of all, what he has done for us on the cross. Bless his holy name today. Now, tonight, brothers and sisters, we are going to go right to the word of God. Uh, and tonight's scripture will be coming from the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 1 through 21. That's the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 1 through 21. Amen. The last three books of John, we're going to be right before, amen, we get into the book of Revelation. So towards the end of the New Testament, I will be reading from the New King James Version, but please follow along with whatever version you have available to you. Amen. I will begin at verse one. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And this is the spirit who bears witness, because the spirit is truth. For there 
are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe, God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given up the Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin, which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the world, whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. May the Lord bless both the hearers and doers of his word. That is the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 through 21. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us all up this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us here this evening, amen, to convene for this Bible study. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for healing our bodies, Lord. Uh, anyone that had woke up this morning or made it throughout this day with pain in their bodies from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, we want to pray for healing for them right now in Jesus' name. We want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for forgiving us of our sins, Heavenly Father, so that we can partake in your word, so that we can have an opportunity to partake, amen, in your heavenly kingdom for the things of this world, as you say, Heavenly Father, are passing away. And let our minds stay at home be so that we can have perfect peace. So we thank you tonight, Heavenly Father, for this fellowship. We thank you tonight, Heavenly Father, for this companionship. Let our hearts and minds be open as you uh, bestow and convey the word of God, the bread of life, into each of our bodies, mind, and soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again, brothers and sisters, for joining me tonight for the word of God. Now let us take our minds off of everything and everyone and let us place it on Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh. Now, tonight, I'd like to speak with you a few moments uh, concerning a very important message, God in three persons. Yes, the God in three persons. Now, this may be one of the most controversial aspects, brothers and sisters, of our faith. Why? Because this causes many people to unbelieve. This causes uh, divisions amongst the various Denomination of this causes the beings amongst three Abrahamic faiths of uh, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Yes, all three uh, deriving from Abraham, a man from his son Ishmael and Isaac, and through Esau and Jacob. Uh, yes, you get all the major three world faiths, a man from Abraham. Now, how they all view the Lord how they all view God and how they all view his son, Jesus. Amen. That is where the division is going to be. And one of the most controversial aspects of that causes division amongst people, which really separates our faith from others, is the belief that Jesus Christ is the son of God. 
Uh, there are many people who do not believe um, that uh, God has a son because God is God. Uh, and so therefore he would have no need of any children or anything else. Again, this is according to certain people's beliefs. And then there are others who believe, well, um, he had a son, but he was in God form. Uh, he didn't come in flesh because there is no way that God can die. So there's no way that he could actually come in flesh form. Well, brothers and sisters, the Bible speaks contrary to that. Amen. It says the exact opposite. Now, many of us cannot wrap our minds around this concept of uh, the Lord turning into a flesh human being because we are uh, sort of relying, not sort of, we are actually relying on our own understanding of the universe. Um, yes, uh, Proverbs tells us, do not lean on your own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. Well, the question I would have for those who don't believe that God came in flesh form because they don't believe that it's possible, my question to them would be, God is almighty. He is infinite. He is eternal. Why would we be able to understand all of his ways? Why would we be able to uh, take the, the all of the laws of the universe and all of the laws of nature that uh, we have simply uh, made for ourselves so that we can understand how everything is held to the ground? So we created the concept of gravity. Um, that is something that helps us stay grounded, so to speak. But the reality is, brothers and sisters, the Lord needs no justification. He does not need science. Uh, science was created. He created that for us. He does not need any of our equations. He does not need any of our philosophy. He does not need any of our logical reasoning. I remember part of the uh, reason why we have logical reasoning is because it goes back to the Garden of Eden, the tree, amen, the forbidden tree, uh, eating of the tree of both good and evil. Whereas beforehand, uh, we were forced as Adam and Eve to just accept things of a divine nature. And this is a very subject, brothers and sisters, that deal with the divinity, amen, of Jesus Christ, both the humanity and the divinity of Jesus Christ. Now, many people, again, are still stuck on this aspect. Many theologians, many highly educated people. Um, this is one of the more controversial issues. You could have people literally sitting down debating for generations on this concept that somehow God came manifest in flesh form and did so in three persons. Amen. God made in three persons. So brothers and sisters, tonight's scripture focuses on this issue, God in three persons. Now, first, we're going to get into the certainty of God's witnesses. So yes, he came, brothers and sisters. He was made manifest into flesh. But there were witnesses that he has appointed uh, to testify to us uh, from him that these things actually took place. John starts off saying very clearly, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now, some of you may remember a previous message on this already. But brothers and sisters, this is something that I feel, uh, amen, and spiritually that this is something that needs to be broached more. We're, I'm being led here to do this again because this is something that's happening in our atmosphere, uh, there's too much uncertainty, amen. There's too much doubt. Too many of us are still on the fence in terms of the divinity of Jesus Christ. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Son, who, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. Meaning if you love him who is begotten, then you love him of who is begotten of him. That is God. If you love Jesus, then you love the Father, amen, because him and the Father are one. Now, many are going to see John uh, Ipsos, uh, Epitsos, his books. Uh, they're very direct. Um, he really does not sugarcoat anything. He's really going directly to the heart of the matter. He's not uh, holding anyone's hands. He's telling people specifically, if you believe in the Son, then you have life. If you do not believe, you do not have life. He's not really painting any gray areas. Uh, there is no cutting corners here at all whatsoever for any of us. Verse two, by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. So many people, I've heard this too many times before. Well, the Bible says that we need to love our neighbor as I love myself. If I don't love myself, then I cannot love my neighbor. Um, there's truth to that. Absolutely. However, there's something even more important than loving yourself. What is the first commandment? 
love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. So before you even get into the concept of loving oneself and loving thy neighbor, your first commandment is to love the Lord the most high. Well, how do we do that? Are we talking about in a simple emotional love? Well, many remember there's plenty of messages on the various types of love and how uh, in Greek, uh, they have divided them essentially into four different versions. But the reality is, brothers and sisters, the word of God tells us exactly the version that we are to take as it pertains to him. It says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. So if you want to know how to love God, brothers and sisters, um, this is not about just giving him a hug. This is not about simply just bringing offerings anymore. This is about keeping his commandments. This was the essence of the old Mosaic Code. Uh, but what ended up taking place, the Hebrew Israelites coming all the way down to the generations, they would bring the offerings, but not their heart. They would bring the offerings, but not his commandments. So now he's commanding us plainly and simply follow his commandments. Amen. If you follow his commandments, that is the love of God. Now, by this, we know that we uh, love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So then he tells us how to uphold the second important commandment. By we know that we love the children of God when we love God. So meaning you're going to be able to fulfill the second part by doing the first part. So you're going to love your neighbor as you love yourself by first loving God. It all starts with him, brothers and sisters. So whatever self-hatred that we may be suffering from, uh, self-pity, self-depression, um, he is telling us that we must take up our cross and follow him. We have to first get out of our own feelings about our birth down here, um, our families, our family situations, our financial situations. He came to deliver us from all of these things. Amen. He came to rescue us from all of these things that we are dealing with in our life. And the only way that is going to happen is if we start to learn to love God. Many people say, well, how can I do that if I don't love myself? That's not what the commandment is, brothers and sisters. We have put the cart before the horse. You're not going to know how to love yourself without loving God first. You must love God first. He always comes first. Um, our self-esteem does not come first. Our self-pride does not come first. Our self-honor does not come first. Your neighbors do not even come first. What who comes first is God. We must love God and his commandments. Amen. For this is the love of God. His commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, amen. Brothers and sisters, it is our faith, amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Um, this is not about how much money you're making down here on this earth. This is not about how many charities you're creating. It's not about how much money you're tithing and putting into the plate. All of those things are nice, but understand this. If this was simply about making money, um, Jesus would have been giving seminars on business opportunities and those sorts of things. That's not what he was doing. He was recruiting brothers and sisters for the kingdom. Amen. He was collecting souls, saving souls, brothers and sisters, healing the blind, healing the sick. Amen. The deaf. Amen. And the lame. He came to set the captives free. Amen. Getting caught up in the things of the world is actually doing the opposite of setting people free. So if we preach a message contrary to the gospel, if we preach a message of this world, which tells us to focus on the things of the world, then we are, in, in fact, preaching not to free people. We're, we're preaching change to put back on them when Jesus has come to set us all free from this life. And how are we going to do that? And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Not how many decimal points are in our bank accounts. Yes, of course, it would be lovely if we could have more. Uh, but to whom much is given, much is required. But it's our faith, brothers and sisters. It's our faith. It's not our doctorate degrees. It's not our 4.0 intellectual GPAs. It's not um, our uh, propensity to do business. It's not uh, your fantastic health or your level of attractiveness or gifts or talents that you have. It's our faith, brothers and sisters. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God? That's it, brothers and sisters. Jesus told uh, the men who he was ministering to, they said, Lord, what are the works that we need to do? He said, these are the works that you believe in the Son of God. Now, people were going to say, well, brother, do we not have to have works? Yes, the works, brothers and sisters, are going to be the fruits. Okay, But oftentimes we get ahead of ourselves and we're focusing on fruit without understanding 
there will be no fruit without a seed. There has to be the seeds, brothers and sisters, the seed of faith, just a mustard seed of faith. That's all we need, because from there, everything is going to fall into place in terms of the work that you're going to do, which is evidence of your faith. But do not put the evidence before the seed. He who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus Christ is the son of God. This concept is very difficult, brothers and sisters, for people to understand. Why? Because there is so much information that is being bombarded onto them. Uh, this is not pointing fingers and casting aspersion on our brothers and sisters. We want them all, amen. We, uh, The Lord said it is his desire that none shall perish. So we are here, amen, to preach his gospel, his gospel, his good news, amen, so that we can recruit everyone, amen. Everyone who wants to come aboard, amen, the ark can come aboard. But to do so, we're going to have to do so by faith. It's not going to be about our intellectual knowledge of the Bible. We we can quote every single scripture in this book, brothers and sisters, backwards and forwards. But if we do not believe, then we are no different than the demons themselves. The demons themselves believe that God exists. They know he exists. But what separates them from the angels are obedience. Amen. We must uh, obey the word of God, not just know it. We need to obey it. But as we get to the central point of the message, God in three persons. Now he's going to begin to list to us and show us the witnesses, amen, the witnesses of him, amen, made manifest into flesh. This is he who came by water, verse 6, and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness, because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the word and the Holy Spirit. Now, many people are going to say, well, we understand who the Father is. We understand who the Holy Spirit is. Well, who is the word? Well, the word, brothers and sisters, according to John, St. John, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Amen. The word was made flesh, brothers and sisters, flesh in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, is the walking embodiment of the word of God. Yes, he is the walking manifestation of the text. Now, many people will say, well, how is that even possible? How can you, a human being, become the manifestation of anything? Remember, brothers and sisters, there is nothing impossible for God. These are things that are above our normal uh, human intellect. This is why we question it. This is why it's hard for us to understand. But we must understand, brothers and sisters, the Lord created everything from nothing. Everything that is came from something that we cannot see. And when he separated the firmaments from the firmaments in the book of Genesis, the light from the darkness, there wasn't a formula that he had to ask any of our permission from. No, he thought it, he spoke it, and he created it. He did not need our quote-unquote laws of the universe or our quote-unquote laws of nature. Things that we created, concepts that we created to help us understand how things work. Well, guess what, brothers and sisters? Uh, the Lord needed no assistance then, and he needs no assistance now. He created uh, the first man and the first woman from the dust of the earth. Uh, then the woman came from the man. Brothers and sisters, he does things to our minds that does not make sense. And then later, um, obviously, the book of Matthew, he brings forth his son. He brings forth his son through a woman who did not know a man. And he brings forth his son via the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, yes, God became flesh. Amen. Why? How do we know this? The witnesses, it says right here, for three bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one, God in three persons. Brothers and sisters, this is the witness. If you bring witnesses to a court, or rather, if you do not bring witnesses to a trial in a court of law, your case is not going to be more than likely substantiated, and you are probably going to lose the standard of review, your burden of proof. Therefore, you probably are going to lose your case. You need evidence. Well, all we heard throughout the word of God, particularly in the New Testament, was, Lord, give us a sign. Give us evidence. Well, the Lord finally does. So he says, look, you have the evidence you need. I bear witness in three, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. All three brothers and sisters testify that this is true. All three testify that God the Father came, amen, made manifest in his son, Jesus Christ, amen. All three brothers and sisters, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this is their testimony to us. So what more evidence do we need? 
what more debate do we need? What other theologian are we waiting on down here to help us understand this concept or to believe it? Remember, our understanding isn't required. It says our faith, amen. We have to believe, uh, we need to believe. So this is what's required. It's not our level of understanding. What we're trying to do, we're trying to put, again, the car before the horse. We're trying to learn to love ourselves before we learn to love God. It's not going to happen that way. And in the same way, we're trying to understand the concept of the Trinity. We're trying to understand the concept of God being made flesh. When the reality, what we must first do is believe, amen. The understanding is going to come in his due season. But first, we need to understand, to, uh, under, to, 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 to grasp the concepts that he's speaking on. He told the disciples routinely, if you do not understand me, if I'm talking of earthly things, you are not going to understand if I'm talking about heavenly things. So this, brothers and sisters, as he said, this is an earthly concept. This is something that he wants us to be able to understand uh, or something that he wants us to be able to have faith in. Because we're not going to be, if we cannot understand the things here on earth, uh, the fact that he can do anything he desires, including to make himself into a flesh body. How can we even begin to understand heaven? How can we even begin to understand things of the divine nature if we are holding ourselves down based on the so-called laws of nature, the so-called laws of natural science? Brothers and sisters, our Lord is not subject to those laws. His jurisdiction is uh, omnipotent. His jurisdiction is omnipresent. Um, he has no limitations, brothers and sisters, on what he can do. Uh, why? Everything that we know came from him. Every science, every math. Every philosophy, every logic, every reason, it all came from him. Verse 8. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And all three agree as one. So not only does he set forth to give us a set of witnesses in heaven, he now gives us a set of witnesses here on earth, things that actually happen down here. It says three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. Jesus talked about his baptism being of both the water and the blood, meaning the water, uh, the initial baptism that he would have with John the Baptist, and then later on, his baptism on the cross. Now it says all three of these are one. All three brothers and sisters testify to him. Uh, there were people that's, that were around, that were around, that saw Jesus, that made contact with him. As a matter of fact, Jesus is mentioned and written uh, an important figure in all of the Abrahamic faiths. The dispute is in terms of his divinity amongst the three, but they all agreed, brothers and sisters, that he is, he did exist. But we must understand this. The way that he spoke, the way that he talked was different than any other person that has ever walked this earth. Um, he spoke with a command. He spoke with an authority. Uh, he spoke with an assurity, not an insecurity, not of one making grand proclamations and trying to just have people follow him. No, he, he spoke, brothers and sisters, with the calm assertiveness of who he was, of who he is, and who he always will be, how he came, a man of the Father, to do the work that the Father has called him to do. And here in his word, he's conveying to us that, yes, he came, yes, uh, from heaven and down to earth, in earth form, in flesh form, God in three persons. Verse 9, if we witness, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God which he has testified of his son. He testified, brothers and sisters. So let's understand what this means. Yes, God himself testifies. Now we want to say, well, a witness goes into the stand uh, to testify of what he or she has saw in terms of the events of the case in question. Well, now we have a situation where we know on, there's only one, jo uh, one judge and that is God. But he also now has... Uh, made witness, amen, he has witnessed for us, so now he's testifying for our sake, he's letting us know, my little children, these things are true, just believe, amen, we're trying to debate, we're trying to understand, we're trying to figure out, and he's saying, look, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, not our understanding, not our grasp of all the concepts, not all of these um, various formulas that we're trying to triangulate to try to help us understand the divine, not our propensity for superstition or witchcraft or any of these other things, brothers and sisters. It says our faith, our faith, that is going to be the victory. So God is testifying through his three witnesses, himself, the word and the Holy Spirit. And then here on earth, the Holy Spirit, 
the water and the blood. He's testifying. So he's provided six witnesses, brothers and sisters, six accounts so that we can understand a man that he uh, came in flesh form. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar. Why? Because he has not believed the testimony that the God has given of his son. God testified, brothers and sisters, of his own son's existence. If you fail to under, if you fail to uh, believe this testimony, then it says God has made him a liar because you have not believed. Amen. This harkens back to John three sixteen. For whosoever uh, believes, a man uh, is saved, brothers and sisters. Whoever believes is not condemned. But those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Well, let us not be condemned, brothers and sisters. Let us not be condemned by our own understanding, our own lack of grasp of the situation before us. He's asking us to believe. Now, many people will say, brother, that's hard for me to do. I have to see proof. I have to see facts. And I will say to you, when we're dealing with each other, completely agree when we're dealing with one another when you are dealing with mankind, but when you're dealing with the father, brothers and sisters, when you're dealing with the creator, he, there's a different set of standards when we walk into his throne room. And keep in mind, he always wants us to understand when you are in your 911 moments in your life, who is it that you call upon? Amen. Do you call upon your wife? Do you call upon your husband? Do you call upon your children? Now, many people do, but understand this, they're not going to be able to stay you. They're not going to be able to heal your body, okay? The doctors can only do so much. Who are we going to call on when the doctors are confounded from that situation? Almighty God. Who are we going to call upon when our life is in danger? Almighty God. For those who have ever served in the military, there is an old saying, there are no atheists in foxholes, meaning that when the bullets start flying, amen, when the fire starts coming from over the top, Everyone calls upon the name of the Lord. So brothers and sisters, he is here to tell us today that same Lord, that same God, amen, you are calling out to. He has witnessed to us of his son, came, uh, made flesh form to die for the forgiveness of all of our sins. Bless his holy name today. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this is life in his son. Amen. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Brothers and sisters, it cannot be any more plain and simple than that. Um, we can have great respect for everyone around the world, everyone's various belief systems, etc., etc. But John is very clear here. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. Now, many people will say, well, you know, I, I may I not believe I believe something different. Brothers and sisters, no one is forcing anyone to believe in anything. But John is stating a standard here because God has created a situation for all of us to have the same level of playing field, so to speak. We know that life is not fair for everyone. We know that there are some who have unspeakable riches. There's many who have unspeakable levels of poverty. So our faith in God, brothers and sisters, cannot be based upon those inequities in life because we don't all, we were not all born with the same hand. We just were not. Many people are born with various types of illnesses and disabilities. Other people, again, are born into perfect health. They seemingly don't have anything wrong or happening to them. So would it make any sense, brothers and sisters, for our uh, salvation to be based upon how much money we can give? How many ministries we can start because the rich are always going to have an advantage in that regard. But this is a standard, brothers and sisters, that levels the playing field for all of us. Faith. Amen. Faith. Uh, not understanding of all of the concepts that he's speaking. He wants us to have faith because we're not going because there's too much in life that causes all of us to, to not have understanding. Again, the inequity in the world that we see itself. There are people who serve their entire lives in the ministry uh, and then have unfaithful or un. Uh, or very tragic circumstances in the end, whereas there is the wicked man, amen, who lives his life uh, according to the indulgence of the flesh and seemingly uh, lives to be quite a long time. So there are going to be lots of things, brothers and sisters, that confuse us. So, the, But the only way to the Father is through faith. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Brothers and sisters, his word does not return to him void.
He does not write blank checks. Um, has anyone ever been in the unfortunate situation where you wrote a check or something? Maybe your credit card got declined or the check bounced. Well, the Lord does not write blank checks, brothers and sisters. He does not write checks that bounce. Okay, so when he speaks, it's going to happen. It has already happened and it will continue to happen. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So you have eternal life, brothers and sisters. Don't let anyone, don't let anything talk you out of your inheritance. Let us not be as Esau, a man with Jacob, a man. Esau basically wanting to fill the fulfillment of his body, signed away his birthright. Many of us today, because we don't see eternal life on this side, because we don't see many of the promises that we have been praying for, we give away our birthright, we give away our faith, a testimony in Jesus. Why? Uh, to fulfill our bodies, to fulfill our minds, to fulfill whatever it is we're trying to do. And again, all have fallen short of the glory of God. So none of us are pointing fingers at anyone in particular. But we must understand, brothers and sisters, this is a man, our birthright. This is because of him, not because of anything we have done. But we have eternal life because we believe in the name of the Son of God. That's what he says. People are saying, well, you know, I need to see evidence. I need to see all of it. No, the Lord told us we shall know them by their fruit. So the fruit are there for us to examine. But he didn't say anything about that being the requirement prior, the precursor to your faith. The fruits come afterwards. Okay, Faith without works is dead, uh, but works without faith. Uh, you're no different than anyone else in the world with money trying to do something. OK, so faith, the faith must come first, then the works. But we put too much emphasis on the works oftentimes. And what we don't fail to realize is we're not believing. Sometimes half of the times we're not becoming healed. Uh, we're not being healed of our sickness, our disease, our generational warfare curses, because we simply don't believe. Now, many people say, well, Brother John, that's not true. I believe God. I believe in Jesus. Yes, but do we believe that he actually can handle our situation? Because oftentimes each situation is going to come at us very differently. Uh, perhaps the next illness could be very painful compared to the last or the next financial situation could be worse. So it's going to require a deeper level of faith, brothers and sisters. Um, not saying more faith. He says faith the size of a mustard seed, but a deeper level of faith. Every time we get into a new situation, a new occurrence, it requires a deeper and closer relationship with him. So there is no, well, yes, I just believe in God. Yes, you may, and that is good, but there's going to be deeper levels of our relationship with Jesus Christ that we're going to have to go into um, a deeper level, just as if you're digging a hole into the earth, you can go deeper and deeper. Well, that's what he wants us to do. So we must always remember that it always starts with faith. Amen. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. Brothers and sisters, according to his will, amen, this is one of the most overlooked portions of these scriptures, according to his will. Yes, we know that there are lots of things that we need and lots of things that we want. But what is it that the, the most high, what does he want for us? Uh, what is it that he wants for us in our lives? Amen. This is what his will is. This is why we have to be on board with his will so that we may know what to pray for and what to ask for. Uh, it said repeatedly that uh, Paul says we do not know what we ought to pray about, which is why we are blessed to have the Holy Spirit, which provide intercession for us constantly before the Father, because we don't know all the time what to ask for. We have a general idea, general knowledge, but we really don't know all of it. So we're always sort of shooting in the dark as it pertains to that, but we don't have to do that any further. Amen. All we have to do is believe. If anyone sees his father, his brother sinning a sin, which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life. Excuse me. He will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. Now, this confuses many of us as well. Well, why would there be a difference between sin and sin? Um, isn't it true that there is no big sin or little sin in God's eyesight? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's all stinks in his nostrils, brothers and sisters. But he's telling us here that every occurrence in the law is not a felony. There are some uh, misdemeanors, so to speak. There are some sins that lead to death and others do not. Um, we know the major, amen, those amongst the major sins, right? 
Uh, do not commit adultery. Uh, do not kill. Do not steal. Do not covet the things of that name. There are lots of things, brothers and sisters, that can lead to way worse situations where there are other things that we do um, that are minor, but still very important. Why? Because he says all unrighteousness is sin and there is sin not leading to death. There are going to be certain things that we can do that are going to be considered worse, brothers and sisters. There's worse consequences for it. Um, there's more things associated with it. Remember, whenever we commit an act or not commit an act, we're planting a seed. That seed will grow into trees, which are going to bear fruit. This is why you'll see uh, with King David, uh, a man after God's own heart, a man. Uh, he did that thing with Bathsheba, and he did the thing with Uriah having him murdered. So those two infractions, brothers and sisters, those two seeds grew trees, large trees in his household where the prophet uh, Nathan told him the sword will never leave your household. And it did not, brothers and sisters, going all the way through even his son, King Solomon, where the kingdom was ended up being divided up. So the small things that we do, small good deeds can grow into great fruit. Same thing happens with bad, which is why he's telling us there is sin leading to death and sin not leading to death. If we do not know what we have done. We don't know the difference. This is what we have to seek him for. Amen. This is what we have to have our relationship for with him because he will lead you. He will guide you. He will lead you away from certain things completely. Whereas other times he's watching you. Okay, He's watching you to see what or not you're going to do. Uh, but nonetheless, he's always watching. But we should seek him. Amen. Seek the spirit so that we can understand how to walk by the spirit. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Yes, brothers and sisters, you can have these debates with how many other people you want, but oftentimes you're not going to get anywhere. Why? The whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. He's regarded as the prince of the air, the prince of this world. Why? Because this is his area, final area of any sort of ruling before, amen, the final days come upon the uh, end of time. So, brothers and sisters, we must understand this is why debating is so fruitless, because people are going to believe what they're going to believe. Um, back in the book of Judges, people did in those days what was right in their own eyes. So what are they doing today? They're still doing what, what is right in their own eyes. So you're not going to be able to have these debates with people. This is why he has commissioned us to preach the gospel, not to come out here and to debate the gospel, because there are going to be people who are never going to believe no matter what you say. Um, Moses performed miracle after miracle right in Pharaoh's court and Pharaoh refused to believe. So he's letting us know that they did not believe his son, Jesus Christ. So they're not going to believe you either. And we must always understand that regardless of the level of belief that we are dealing with in the audience, that it is important that we are doing what we are called to do. Thus says the Lord, bless his holy name. And we know that the son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Now, first John, brothers and sisters, chapter four, really, you could just say this one page prior to this uh, really clears this up even more. Amen. It clears this up even more by talking specifically God being made in flesh form, which continues to verify, amen, that yes, God is a man in three persons. So chapter four, verse one says, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the spirit is not of God. Again, there is no debate here, brothers and sisters. There is no mixing and uh, matching of words. Um, there is no mixing and matching of concepts. If you're dealing with anyone who does not believe uh, that Jesus, a man, the son of God, came in flesh form is not of God. Uh, this is a, a, an easy tenet to overlook because there are many people out here purporting to be all sorts of various types of messengers. Again, we're not going to go into who's the right one and here's the wrong one. Call any specific body out by name. No, the Lord has commissioned me to preach a man, his word, which is right here before us. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh 
is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. In fact, brothers and sisters, there are going to be people that not only not confess that Jesus came in flesh form, um, they're going to confess uh, again that he did not, that they don't believe it. And they actually dispute that he came in flesh form. Yes. So you're dealing with an, uh, an aggressive group of population of people today. Remember, chapter five says the whole world is under the sway of the wicked. So there's lots of doctrine that is being mixed and matched. And many times you, they're not even going to tell you whether or not they believe that. They will only respond to that if they're even asked. This is why John says to test the spirits. Don't just fly and just don't blindly uh, follow behind any type of teaching. Go and find out what that person really truly believes. Do they believe that Jesus uh, is the son of God? Number one, do they believe that he came in flesh form? And you may be shocked. You may be shocked at just how uh, divisive that question is to many people when it should not be. Of course, we know he came. Amen, brothers and sisters. We believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and came in the flesh. You are of God, little children. And have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as the world and the world hears them. We are of God and he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this we know, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So, brothers and sisters, he's letting us know again. Um, the world is going to believe what it wants to believe. Uh, but greater Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Um, people who are of this world, they are of its systems. Uh, they are obsessed with everything that is happening down here. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, therefore, they speak as of the world and the world hears them because they are of the world. Excuse me. He has created us, brothers and sisters, to be not of the world. Amen. He has called us to be outside of it. Yes, we are here in it, but we are not to be of it. Bless his holy name today. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this we know, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Bless his holy name today. Now, for anyone looking for scripture, perhaps you're of a certain denomination, various denominations, various uh, belief systems or, or sects that believe different things. Well, let's believe this, brothers and sisters. Turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. That's the book of Matthew. Chapter 18, chapter 28, verse 18 through verse 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even until the end of the age. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go forth, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, God in three persons. These small facts, brothers and sisters, are oftentimes overlooked. They have caused families to split up. They have called husbands and wives to divorce. They have caused various frictions without, throughout the church. Why? Uh, because many people still fail to believe that there was God in three persons. They still refuse to believe that Jesus is the son of God and that much less he came in flesh form. And now we see that they refuse to believe why. And even though he specifically says right here, uh, baptize them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit. His three witnesses, brothers and sisters, his three witnesses that he came uh, to testify and then that he came to let us know this is, this is who he is. And then this is who he has testified uh, God has testified of himself so that we may believe, bless his holy name today. So God in three persons, brothers and sisters. Again, we can go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, or chapter 3, or I should say, and chapter 3, verse 22. Uh, chapter 1 and 26 says very, very clearly, as he was creating the earth, as he had already cre created the plant to the animals, separated the firmaments from the firmaments, God then proceeds to say, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping things that creeps on the earth. 
So, brothers and sisters, the Lord created a man, Adam. And yes, we know Adam and Eve in our image. It says, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. So many of us suffering from self-hatred, we're suffering from, we must understand the Lord loves us. He created each of us according to his likeness, not according to your likeness, not according to the likeness of the world, but to the likeness of the creator, the same creator, brothers and sisters, that created everything that we've ever known. Uh, so he came uh, again, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Is there anything about according to my likeness or your likeness? His likeness, brothers and sisters, God in three persons. Amen. Essentially, turn a page, go to the book of Genesis, chapter three, verse 22. Then God said, behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Amen. So now, unless he put out his hand, to take also the tree of life and to eat it and live forever. So, brothers and sisters, um, Jesus told the Pharisees that before Abraham was, I am. Moses uh, asked the Lord, who should I tell them who sent me? The father in heaven told him, you tell them I am sent you. Brothers and sisters, he does not need to justify himself for us. We are his creations. If you're waiting for an algorithm, if you're waiting for an algebraic equation that you can use to try to understand the most high, you're just going to be waiting a very long time, brothers and sisters, because those are not the things that he is interested in when it comes to us. It's only one thing, faith, amen. He wants our faith, brothers and sisters. He wants us to believe him because we're not going to be able to understand his ways of thinking. How many of you have ever tried to go outside and try to catch air? Or you tried to catch the ocean? You tried to go out there and put as much of it can in small bags, but it's too, it's too big. Well, brothers and sisters, his ways are not our ways. You are not going to be able to fully understand all of the things that he's done. Uh, so he, this is why he wants us to have faith. Amen. Have faith. God in three persons. Yes. Three separate people. So the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Bless his holy name today. So brothers and sisters, please take forward uh, in this word. Amen. Please take heed uh, that yes, God in three persons is a real thing. It is a real thing. Um, it is very uh, crucial. Amen. To the tenant, to having a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're not going to be able to have that unless we first believe that he is, amen, and that he came manifest into flesh form, putting all of the, the burdens of the world on his shoulders to take to the cross, amen, to give his life. No one took it. He gave it, amen. He gave his life for each and every single one of us. Bless his holy name today. So thank you, brothers and sisters, for uh, joining me tonight for this Thursday Night Bible Study. Let us go forward, amen, and be encouraged in the word. If you feel yourself needing healing, if you feel yourself being down and out, just get back into the word. Get back into the word, brothers and sisters. The word heals our bodies. It heals our minds. It heals our spirits. Bless his holy name today. Thank you all. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, uh, gracious God, for uh, this beautiful Thursday. We thank you, Heavenly Father for protecting all of the children as many of them across the country have started back school we thank you for keeping them all safe and sound from all hurt harm and danger both the seen and the unseen uh bless your holy name today so we thank you jesus we thank you heavenly father for waking us up we thank you heavenly father lord for keeping us amen keeping us amen from the evil we want to thank you lord god we want to thank you heavenly father for your word tonight uh, that you have meant to send forth for the edification of our spirits and souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again, brothers and sisters, for joining me. Uh, please continue to join us every week on Facebook on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. for prayer, Thursday nights at 8 p.m. for Bible study, and Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. for the Word of God. Please remember to visit our YouTube channel, uh, Revelation of Warfare Ministries, for additional biblical and Word of God content. Also, if you would like to add yourself or someone you know to our weekly prayer list, please submit your information to Revelation of Warfare Ministries at yahoo.com. That's Revelation of Warfare Ministries at yahoo.com. Brothers and sisters, I am Minister John Pickens with Revelational Ministries, and I would like to thank you for joining me for the word of God. Amen. Have a very, very blessed night. <music>